How's it going, YouTube? Scott the Mass Nerder here, bringing you part two of Rolls of the Engineer Kit. This time we're going to be dealing with armor and vehicles. Before I go further, I just want to say I'm not much for vehicles. I'm more of an infantry guy. Because of that, I never really keep any of my vehicle clips. So what you're seeing as a backdrop is not of the quality you may be accustomed to. I apologize, but hopefully the tactics will still help. I have a few friends who are amazing with vehicles, so I've consulted them a bit on these tactics. Last video, we saw how similar the Assault and Engineer class can function in game modes or maps without vehicles. But here, we're going to see how the Engineer can benefit you even more when vehicles come into play. It's obvious that if you are dealing with enemy vehicles or planning to use your own team's vehicles to your advantage, a good Engineer is a huge asset. Not exactly a necessity for enemy vehicles as some fixed gun emplacements or your friendly vehicles can aid you in the destruction, but nothing beats repairing your friendly vehicles when in a firefight. Let's start with taking down enemy vehicles. When going to destroy vehicles, you've got to check your surroundings before you shoot. You want to check for enemy ground troops and for adequate cover in case the vehicle returns fire or enemy infantry engage. I like buildings for cover, but generally not inside the building. The walls, as we said in part 1, help keep that explosion focused inward at you. So running around the outside of the building will keep the slow turrets guessing. It's best to use your squad, you get on one side of the vehicle and you have squad mates on the other. This is because 8 out of 10 times the enemy will bail from the vehicle. When they do, they'll run to the side opposite you, if he's smart anyway. <laughs> A squad mate will be waiting, but no matter what, as you should see in a clip coming up where I'm in a tank and a guy keeps circling me, and I was, I was cracking up about it, but it shows if he wasn't trying to shotgun my armor to death, it would have been very effective, so keep moving. Also, remember if the vehicle is hurt, you can repair tool it to death. If you see your, the enemy jump out, the safest solution can sometimes be to quickly jump in the vehicle, just long enough to orient yourself to the enemy position. Then use either the tank turrets or locate them, bail, and gun them down. So, we can destroy a vehicle, but how do we keep it alive? If you have a vehicle in a crucial area and it's doing a lot of damage, you need to have effective support for it. That means ground troops and overwatch protecting any friendly engineers on the repair and stopping any sneaky support classes from throwing C4. And always try to call out when you see someone throw C4, even if you're not positive any was thrown. The C4 stays even after the support is killed, and he can spawn back in and then blow it then. Anyway, some things to remember. If you bail from a vehicle, you will come out on the side your turret or weapon was facing. Since the engineer's ground troop role can in some cases be covered by the assault, it's not always smart or required to have two engineers, even if planning to be in the vehicle the whole game. But if you do only have one engineer, which seat should he be in? Really? It doesn't matter. But what does matter is knowing when to switch seats and which seat should stay occupied. The minute my vehicle starts taking fire, our engineer is making sure the area is clear, asking squad mates, etc., trying to jump out, use the friendly vehicle for cover, and be there to repair. Even if we haven't actually sustained any damage yet, you just can't be beat unless multiple enemies are engaging with explosives at once. The trick here is who to keep in the vehicle and who jumps out. If vehicle versus vehicle, we keep the driver of the tank and have the gunner jump out. Doesn't matter who was in which seat, just have to communicate and switch seats quickly. If vehicle versus ground forces, just the opposite. But if you have the coaxial unlocked for the driver, it can sometimes be just as good as the gunner. As a driver though, when a squad mate is repairing, you have to not only be concerned with destroying the enemy, but keeping the squad mate alive as well. This means if you move, you have to communicate to which direction you're going and which direction fire is coming from. Also, you need to try and position yourself and reposition yourself continually to ensure adequate cover for the engineer. If struggling with an enemy vehicle with engineers doing the same thing as you, sometimes it's advisable to wait until right after the last enemy tank shell is fired, then have the friendly engineer stop repairing just long enough to pop out and shoot an extra rocket. Sometimes it can be just enough to take down enemy armor. You don't need your vehicle at 100% health the whole time if it means giving up a takedown. You also have the option to repair and take down air vehicles. With repair, just make sure to switch seats to the side not taking fire. And don't be afraid to shoot your rockets from air vehicles either. Also, when you're on the ground, keep things spotted to make it easier for your pilots in the air. The engineer isn't always a necessity for a match, but he can always help a team to victory. Just know your gun's limits and don't go head to head at range with other kits unless you are a very sure shot. 
Also, if you have a support, don't fret the ammo count. Shoot rockets into every room before you breach for safety. Unless, of course, you're trying to be sneaky. <laughs> and that's it for this kit. Hopefully it gave you some new ideas for the class, and hopefully you went back and saw part one. This was just a taste of vehicle warfare. I hope to, down the road, bring you more and better tips pertaining to vehicles exclusively, not just the engineer's roles with them. And before you leave, here's two videos to check out. In the top right, a series I will be doing called Nerd Time with Subscribers. Check it out and see what it's all about. In the bottom left is a flashback to the beta, just to show you some of the funny things we used to have to deal with in this game. It's come a long way, but I'll be the first to admit, they still have a lot they can improve on. Have a great day everyone and happy gaming.